Gosh, this is a great turnout today. This is uh, unbelievable. It, uh, it is so good to see. I see a lot of familiar places. We've actually been traveling around. Uh, we've been on this campaign uh, trail for a couple of months now, getting everything going. And it's good to see a lot of these familiar faces. It's good to see a lot of these new faces. As you said, my name is Howard Houchin. She's one of the few individuals that's ever introduced me that got that name right. I'm used to be calling it Hoochin, Hutchins, everything else. Uh, and bravo, that's great. I am the Republican candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives and to represent the most prime piece of terra firma on God's green earth, and that's Oklahoma's District 2. I love Oklahoma. My purpose here today is to, to try to begin the process to convince as many of you as I can to support me in becoming your representative in this experiment that we call American governance. Now, oddly enough, you know, I'm asking you to support me to become a part of an institution that most likely all of us pretty much despise right now. <laughs> Think about that. that you know, what type of person would pursue this endeavor? I think there's two types of people. One is someone who is looking to get this position for personal gain, to increase influence and or personal wealth. The second type of person would be an individual who loves this great nation, loves it enough to sacrifice their privacy, sacrifice their family life, to sacrifice their personal time, their personal well-being at times, someone that has the work ethic and the experience to fight the good fight for the right change, someone that will jump in and not talk, someone that will jump in and take action. I am not the former. I am the latter. I have no time and res or respect for the individual that looks to gain personal influence and wealth. I am the latter in this respect. A lot of people ask, what kind of Republican am I? I happen to be a contributing author to American Daily Review, and what she read to you in that opening bio was, first and foremost, I'm a proud Republican. Second, I am a Reagan constitutional conservative. I cut my political teeth during the Reagan Revolution. I was living overseas, in Indonesia, traveling throughout Southeast Asia at the time during the latter part of the Carter years. I witnessed and experienced firsthand what this did to how other people view the United States. It was tragic. No one respected us until Reagan came in. The peace through strength. I firmly believe in that aspect. A lot of people ask why I'm running, and I'm, I need to make this real quick, and I have to tell a real quick story here. A few years ago, when my, my youngest son was uh, about five years old, he would be playing with toys, and these, uh, most of these toys had batteries. And he'd get frustrated when it didn't work right, and he'd shove it aside. He'd say, oh, this thing's busted. My oldest boy would say, no, Jared, no, it just needs batteries. And, and you know, eventually another toy, he'd throw it aside and say, this thing's busted. Call and say, no, it just needs batteries. Well, sometimes when you translate... The, the mundane in, into the absurd, you get, you get a little bit of humor. So me and Colin were out in the shop one day and we was rotating some tires and I made him use the four-way instead of the impact wrench. The old man got that. And you know, he wasn't used to this four-way. He wasn't used to this manual extraction of these lug nuts with this four-way and it wasn't working quite right. And, and he's got a great sense of humor. He stood back and he goes, <laughs> I said, this thing's busted, it's need, it needs new batteries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you right now, our current makeup of American governance is busted and it needs new batteries. Now, government didn't just become busted in January of this year. This was a process that was reached due to a substantial, sustained, intentional, and targeted process of liberal incrementalism. It was planned, a long time coming. They finally got it. This highly effective incremental approach has resulted in the gradual evolution from laissez-faire capitalism that promotes individual responsibility and promotes individual freedoms into what is outright socialist Marxian ideology. There's no question about it. Senator Coburn has begun using the term 
collectivism. I wish I'd have came up with it first. I didn't. That's what it is. I'm sticking with my Marxist socialist, socialist ideology because that's what it is. In order to reverse this course, these disastrous policies that, policies that are taking us down, we must affect a process of de-evolution. We have evolved into this great, massive, central planning government that we have. We have to de-evolve now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think about it, this will take generations. It's not going to happen just because we go in and say, hey, it would shock the nation into oblivion if you tore everything down. There has to be a process of de-evolution to bring us back to what we are supposed to be. Every campaign has a platform, and mine is, I simply call it, the Great Needs Squared. And I've got to rush through this real quick. The needs are national security, N, E, economic security, energy security, domestic security, and a total rehashing of the debacle which the government has made out of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. The great is government reform, which pretty much begins like my lug nut thing with my son there. Yeah, religion. Any individual who refuses to acknowledge that the United States of America was founded on Judeo-Christian Judeo principles is simply practicing intellectual deceit. That cannot be allowed to happen. Education. We've got to get the federal government out of, out of education. We need to bring it down to the people that know, state level and below. A, it is adherence to the Constitution. T, is taxes. The fair tax, we will eventually get to that point. That's a position that we have to work towards. We can't go there immediately. We can get to that point for taxation. The squared at the end of the Great Needs 2 is simply the Second Amendment. That is what holds everything together. The right to keep and bear arms cannot be messed with. And I'm going to take just a few more seconds here. Folks, I have two documents up here. You brought these up. One of these documents, our current government adheres to. They follow the principles of this document. That is that document right there. What document is continually attacked? This document is continually attacked. This is a document, the tenets and principles that our current administration is following right now. Do the, I'm, I'm serious. Do the research. Look it up. That, that's where we have become today. Listen, District 2 needs a representative who in no uncertain terms understands and possesses first-hand knowledge and experience in dealing with the greatest crisis ever, this crisis of American governance. I'm asking for your support, and together, Oklahoma will clear the path that, to begin placing America back on that mantle of greatest and lasting achievements where she so rightly and deservedly belongs. Thank you, and God bless America. Thanks, Joe. God, that went over.